Well, hello and welcome. My name is Dave Bodie from JoeBono.com, bringing you another audio tutorial exclusively for audio.tutsplus.com. In this tutorial, we're going to check out a really cool sound library from the folks at Sound Iron. That's SoundIron.com. Sound Iron makes a whole bunch of really interesting libraries, most of them for native instruments contact. You can see here they have some really awesome choirs, some experimental sounds, some reason refills, pianos, organs, percussion, tune percussion, strings, micro packs, atmospheres and drones, horrors, wind, and bundles. Some really, really high quality stuff. Today, what we're going to take a look at is a really interesting library called Anti Drum 2. Now, there's two kind of collections in the Anti Drum series. There's one and two. They're both kind of a collection of kind of interesting sounds that you can use as instruments. Some of them are melodic, some of them are percussion, some of them are just kind of sound effects, um, and others are just kind of ambient sounds and drones and things of that nature. So Antidrum 2 is made up of 71 different instrument patches, things like boom whackers, PVC pipe percussion ensemble, glasses, rain sticks, soda bottles, all kinds of wacky stuff and really interesting sounds. The cool thing about Sound Iron is that their samples are what they call deep sampled. And what that means is that they have a good number of velocities. You can see here average of six to eight velocities with eight to 10 round robins per velocity. So for one particular sampled articulation, six to eight different velocities and eight to 10 round robins per velocity. So that means a lot of samples, which is why this library comes with 4,500 samples and it's 1.64 gigabytes, which is not really all that much, but when you consider a lot of these are percussion, that's a good amount because percussion is pretty short. You can see here kind of what they have going on, some finger snaps, soda bottles, staccatos, cell phone, human beatbox, box bang in a hall. So a lot of cool stuff. We're going to check out what this sounds like. And later I'm going to show you a little track that I put together using only these sounds. Like I said before, this is a library that works in contact and you're going to need the full contact version in order to use this at least 4.2 or better. They have some good PDF documentation here and it has the whole rundown of what this library is all about what each one of the kind of patches contains and you know you can get a pretty good idea of what to expect by checking that out. So if you're interested, make sure you do look at that. The other cool thing about this is it's 59 bucks for a download. If you want a DVD, there's a little price for shipping and handling, but 59 bucks, pretty good deal. And they have bundles in which you can get this with some other other sounds for uh, what I would consider a great deal because they they bundle this with uh, all of the other quote experimental type sounds, right? So they have Anti Drum One, they have uh, Kazoo, Cathedral of Junk, uh, Laundronium, Lumina Bells, uh, M1 Grand Rifle, uh, a whole bunch of really cool things. So if you decide to get one of these Sound Iron libraries, it's very easy. You click download, you log into PayPal or Google Checkout. A couple of clicks later, literally less than 30 seconds later, you have purchased this library and you're on your way to checking it out. Now they send you an email and you get a download link for this little program called Connect. And uh, it's made by Continuata. I think that's how you pronounce that there. In the email, you will have a serial number. You paste your serial number on here. You click download and it'll say, hey, where do you want to put this? Choose your file, you hit go and it downloads. It downloads as a RAR file. You can see it right here. The installer actually extracts this RAR file for you. So when it finishes downloading, you're left with this file and then you're left with this folder right here sitting right next to it. Now I've already moved this folder right here to another location, but this is the folder that is ready to go. You don't have to extract the RAR and throw the samples into a different folder. It doesn't, it does everything for you. So you're ready to go. Basically, as soon as you hit the download button and it finishes, you drag the sound iron anti drum two folder over to wherever you want to have that stored. And there you go. In here, you have your instrument patches loaded up here into four folders. Uh, you have an impulse response here that you can load into the contact convolution reverb or another convolution reverb of your choice and mess around with that. They have some good documentation here with some images, which is pretty cool. And they have the samples here. Now the samples for these are actually all just wave files. They're not locked. They're not protected. You can see we can, we can just open these up. 
and play them to your heart's content there. But that means you can use these for other stuff. You can load these in a different sampler if you want. Uh, you know, for some of these things like ATC, air traffic controller, you know, you can use these for sound design stuff in Premiere or any other kind of video editing program or another audio program just as the raw WAV files, which is pretty cool. I have it loaded up here in Reaper. You can see I have uh, Contact 5 loaded up here. Let's check out some of these patches here. Now, these don't show up as libraries over here, but you can find them by going to the Files tab here in Contact and then navigating to wherever you installed it. You can see here, Sound Iron, Anti-Drum 2, boom. And then Instruments, and we have these four. We're going to drill, drill that down. You can see we have these four folders here. Ambience, FX, Melodic, and Percussion. And that's where the instrument patches are stored. So uh, we can start off here. We'll, we'll check out the baritone sax effects. And so that's a lot of that kind of stuff right there. And so, you know, just kind of a bunch of uh, baritone sax kind of effects. And they have baritone sax phrases, right? A lot of that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't find those particular patches super useful for a lot of stuff, but maybe someday. You never know. Now, boom whackers. These are really cool. Now instantly you're going to notice that this patch is wet. And if we drill down here and we look at, um, we look at the instrument effects, you'll see that there is not actually anything. There's no effects really on here. And that's kind of an interesting point here with these sound iron patches. Some of them come dry, recorded kind of in a studio environment. Some of them come wet. And so there is no drying out a wet sample sampled in a hall. It's just, that's the way it is. So these boom whackers, in fact, are recorded in some kind of large hall. And so they always kind of have that really wet sound. definitely have a lot of uh, a lot of wetness in there. I have another boom whackers library made by Waves Factory, which is very very good. But this one is a is an interesting alternative. These have a a kind of a different kind of attack thing going on. Now, the one thing that Sound Iron does with some of the wet patches is they have something called a room control, and that's uh, using the mod wheel here. And that kind of, it basically gates the sound. It's basically choking the release. A less roomy sound. It's kind of based on the release of the note here. So you can see I'll roll the mod wheel up. If I do that really short, it kind of gates it off there. But if I leave the keys down, it's pretty much exactly the same. So that's that for you there. Now there's also a boom whackers soft attack. which is another kind of cool sound. Now, you can see that the range of this instrument is really low to really high, but these boom whackers are an, an actual device. It's like a children's toy, these kind of uh, colored plastic tubes. And if you look in the mapping editor, basically uh, one sample gets stretched down from here lower. And then most of the sample, I mean, that's not one sample, there's different velocities there, but uh, there's no pitches because basically these things are only so long. And so they're basically pitch stretched down after here. 
So most of the action, most of the actual uh, real kind of sampled notes are, are up in this, up in this octave here. Let's jump over to a couple of these other ones here. Glasses. These are water-filled glasses that are hit with chopsticks. Some of them have some kind of warble too when you really crack on the uh, velocity. That one there, boing. Then we got music box chords. And this is, they call it melodic, but um, it's pretty much impossible to play an actual melody. Then we have a music box winding. And these are some kind of uh, the, these are the sampled kind of noises. And kind of pitch stress. So you get some clicks and some windings, winds and stuff in there. And uh, PVC drone ensemble. Then we have this one, which I think is pretty cool, actually. This is a restroom handlebar. Which kind of has almost a, almost a metallic kind of marimba sound, which is pretty cool. And uh, I believe it's, it's only a couple of actual pitched samples here that are being pitch stretched. As you get really low. You know, they, they start to lose their their flavor. But even up high, they sound pretty cool. You can hear some weird noise there. One thing that they mention in their manual is that uh, the sounds are what they are. Some of these sounds are quiet, and some of these sounds have a little bit of noise in them, and they don't make any effort to clean that up, because that's pretty easy to do in post-production. You know, if there's a little bit of low kind of rumble or, or noise in there, you know, you can just throw an EQ on there with a high-pass filter, and away you go. So they kind of leave the samples like they are and, and let you kind of fix them if you need to. Soda bottle. Unglasses. This is kind of a... It's almost like playing the crystal. A really interesting sound. There's definitely some low kind of rumbly business going on there, but pretty easy to take care of. Then they have a water bowl basic. It's like a water, just like kind of a struck water bowl. And then they have one that's been tuned a little bit. And some some kind of uh, tinkling noises there, which is pretty cool. And so that's basically the melodic stuff. Then you get into the percussion stuff, and they have some pretty interesting stuff too here. They have this patch called the Box Bang Hall. Now this is a, I believe it's a cardboard box that they whack down with some sticks in a large hall. This is another one that's this is very lively. There's a, a lot of reverb on there. So uh, with this one, as long as you keep the releases pretty short, you know, the their little room control, you can see the mod wheel moving down there. A little uh, keyboard click in there, but you get the idea. That's a pretty cool sounding thing there. Then we got finger snaps. Just a, just a whole bunch of finger snaps. Massive. This would be pretty cool in kind of a sound design kind of thing. Some big thunks and, and wax and cluds in there. Then they have a phone kind of beatbox thing. That's kind of interesting. Stopwatch. I actually think this is pretty cool. Just 
a whole bunch of kind of stopwatch uh, samples in there. And they have trash can. This is another pretty cool sounding instrument. Pretty neat sounding. Also, I skipped over the water jug. Water jug basic. Pretty cool sounding instrument there, so. And then a warble plinket. Kind of real interesting kind of a percussion there. And effects, right? A lot of different things in here. You know, things like uh, like this kind of stuff. Some PVC whaling. <laughs> interesting, uh, interesting stuff. A slinky experiment. Pretty cool thunder drum. Actually, that, that one's been kind of pitch stretched. This is just kind of the basic version, which hasn't been pitch stretched. The, the room control again here. And so there you go. And then we have ambience. A super long decay. And the mod wheel um, does some kind of filtering there. So just kind of some cool ambience kind of things. Then there's a multi here with it's kind of all of them kind of playing together here. <laughs> so there's also a multi in here with the phone beatbox. Which has been broken up so that you can set up multiple outputs, very similar to what we did like in our classic rock drums tutorial. And so you can kind of multi out this to some different channels in your audio app and apply some different effects there. So, you know, you have your, your uhs and your kicks, clicks. This is basically beatboxing through a cell phone. Some really interesting kind of effects there. So a lot of kind of interesting sounds in here. It's not the type of library that you can buy and easily start creating music solely with this library. This is kind of a, an addition to, you know, you have a track that maybe needs kind of a, a real interesting kind of percussion effect. Maybe you grab those water glasses hit with the chopsticks, or maybe it needs uh, that kind of cool, big boxy sound. A lot of those wet sounds would lend themselves more to something uh, that's kind of more open and not so intimate. You know? A lot of cool stuff there. I want to show you a little track that I made so you can kind of hear how they some of these sounds will work together. Alrighty, here's a little track that I put together. It's really short. It only uses about eight of the patches in Anti-Drum. But I wanted to kind of play it down for you and then look at a couple things we can do to tweak out some of these sounds if you happen to be using them in a similar fashion. So check this out. So you can hear there's a bunch of stuff going on in there. We have the unglasses patch, the PVC super drone, 
box bang, water jug, stopwatch, bathroom handle, boom whackers, water glasses. Now, a couple of a couple of things that are interesting about this plugin, sometimes due perhaps to the round robin-ish sampling. This particular patch, the unglasses, can sound a little bit pitchy. Like that right there sounds a little funny. And now it sounds right. Now it sounds wrong. Now it sounds more right in a different way. And so uh, that's just something that can happen sometimes kind of moving the velocities up and down a little bit can, can help there, but that's just something to check out. Now, a couple of these super wet things that I have going on here probably would sound a little bit better if they weren't so super wet. Things like box bang here. Although it sounds cool like that, in the context of the other instruments, it doesn't sound super awesome. So one thing that we can do is we'll take advantage of their kind of quote unquote room control uh, with the mod wheel here. And so what we can do, see if I play this back, and I push the mod wheel up, that's gonna shorten things up. The problem is that some of these notes, the way that I played them, are a little bit long which is a problem. So the first thing that we can do here is we can just draw in right at the beginning. We'll make sure that the mod wheel is up all the way so that when we start this, you can see right there when that note cut off, that's, that's exactly what we want. Now, the other thing in Reaper and probably most other DAWs, we can quantize these events and, and fix their position, which I've already done. We can also affect their note length, all right? And so let me play this back here. I'll, I'll put this on eighth notes. So right now we're still getting a little bit of that room kind of tone, that trail off there. But look what happens if we shorten these notes up a little bit more. Still get a little bit, 30 second notes. And probably at 128th notes or between 164th and 128th, we're actually running into the limit of the release setting. But that sure sounds a lot different than this. Now it sounds a lot tighter. And so we can make that adjustment with some of these other instruments here as well. So we get these boom whackers here. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's the bathroom handle. Uh, boom whackers. That's, that's pretty wet, so we can do the same kind of idea here. So we'll start this off just like this. Something like that maybe, maybe we want it a little bit wetter. And that's going to still be wet there because we started it halfway through and it wasn't picking up the, uh, the mod wheel, which we can actually just draw in the entire thing like that too. And uh, that will kind of fix that too. So. Also, the water jug here is also kind of wet too. We can listen to that. So the same idea here, we can draw the mod wheel data. Just draw all the way up here just like that. We'll go in here, select all these notes, quantize and fix the note length to just throw in a 64th notes. And that essentially almost makes them sound completely dry. And so let's listen to the, the effect of that here on, on the whole thing. It certainly is a lot cleaner and a lot more pleasing to listen to, I think. What I tried to do in this little piece is just kind of string some of these things together to make some kind of interesting percussion textures. And I used the water glasses too as a kind of little percussion thing. 
And uh, you know, that's pretty much it. I didn't do a whole lot of tweaking to these. Uh, the only thing really is I did a little bit of EQ on just about all of them. I added some compression on a couple of them. The unglasses thing actually does have some, some, a good amount of low business in there. So cracking that up can really help clean that up a good amount. Add a little bit of compression and EQ there. Just added a, a little delay here with a low pass filter. And brought that down and then just a little high pass filter. There's not, there's not a lot of a low information there, but just, just to protect it in case there's any kind of, uh, you know, sample kind of rumble, buzz, hiss, woof in there. Anything that, that may be kind of tricky to hear as it kind of builds up, it may, uh, it may junk up the mix a little bit. So, you know, that, that kind of helps that out. So most everything just got maybe a tiny bit of uh, compression and a, a little low pass filter. The only thing that I, that I really did with this box bang is um, give a little kind of punch EQ here. Let me uh, pull that up here. Little compression. Just to tighten it up a little bit. But that's pretty much it, you know? It's a pretty cool little library. It's cheap and it's cheerful, which is something that I appreciate, you know, in the world of uh, several hundred dollar sample libraries. This is pretty cool because it, it's, it's a lot of different things that you can add to your tool bag in a particular track to give you just the right little flavoring of something, you know, just the right little texture maybe. Anti-Drum by Sound Iron, really cool sound library with a lot of really interesting sounding sounds. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you found that useful and helpful in your music making journey. Again, my name is Dave Bodie from JoeBono.com, bringing you this tutorial exclusively for audio.tutsplus.com. And we'll see you around. Thanks for watching.